to offset. Some years ago, the Obama administration, the United States said it would pivot back to the Asia Pacific. The US, after all, had concentrated much of its energy, resources, and efforts on the war on terrorism. So while Washington was absent in the way Beijing got this, this part of the world, and now with the new Philippine president in power, Manila is making a pivot of its own kind from the United States to China and Russia. My guests in this episode, former diplomat, Ambassador Apolinario Jun Lozada, thank you so for being here, the other Jun Lozada, uh, former National Security Advisor, former Congressman Roy Gordon, thank you again for coming. Thank you, thank you so much. And Tonya Cruz, a uh, Manila Philippine columnist and blogger. Thank you, Tonya, for being here. Okay, so let, let's talk about this whole pivot to China. Um, what do you make of this, uh, everything that's going on, this whole pivot to China? Uh, Julie, I look at it, this is a make or break thing for the Philippines uh, going to China. Um, this is in consonance with the president's uh, independent foreign policy, which I think we should not really use anymore, because if we have to survive, I think we should really do that interdependent foreign policy. We should not lose the partner over the other. So uh, I think- Interdependent meaning we don't turn our backs. Yes. We don't pivot yes. away we from add, one We only add, we don't, add. yeah. Um, so diplomacy is an issue. Yes, I think the, the uh, thing to China, I think they move faster because uh, we would like to get uh, assured that uh, those three billion that we might lose out of the uh, US and Europe may be given to us by China. Three billion in aid uh, today for okay. development assistance. Um, but all of this, uh, we should really look at the political and economic implications of uh, the actions taken by the Philippines towards the country. What, what would really be uh, the sum total after the visit? be a very good way of looking at it after he comes back from China. What have we gained? What have we lost? And uh, what else should really work out? I think that we should really do more uh, looking at how China really looks at Southeast Asia, China's deeper interest in the country, rather than the superficial interest of political and economic assistance, which I think uh, is not really uh, Secretary Wallace, what do you make of this pivot? Well, the word pivot itself uh, means switch. You know, in basketball, when you pivot from the right, you go to the left. That should not be the case, uh, as uh, mentioned by you here. Uh, diplomacy is an uh, issue. So we should not sacrifice an old, if I may say, very good relationship by favor of uh, opening to China. We should open to China. I'm not in favor of how we handle China in the previous administration where we ceased uh, from talking with them. There was practically no, uh, the, the diplomatic channels were closed. We should open, and we should open economically also. There should be a commercial uh, engagement which is going to be very good for both the Philippines and uh, China. Uh, however, there's still that hanging question on uh, the political, the geo-security aspect, which is uh, China, is uh, claiming 80% of the West Philippine Sea, a big part of our exclusive economic zone. They they are not going to budge. I don't see any possibility of them changing that. Uh, in fact, when we won the case in the arbitral tribunal, they insisted that they're not going to respect that. They even insulted uh, the uh, jurisdiction of uh, the uh, uh, arbitral tribunal. And then the following day, they responded by sending a bomber, a strategic bomber, uh, to pass uh, Scarborough Shoal to be a very hostile and uh, unfriendly act. But uh, I go along with, with opening uh, diplomatic channels, commercial channels, uh, engage China culturally, socially, uh, economically, but uh, without sacrificing our victory in, uh, in this uh, July 12th arbitral tribunal decision and without compromising our exclusive economic zone. But is that the West Philippine Sea? But is the use of the term pivot fair? Is that fair? Is that what is happening? Uh, depending, because until now I, I'm not so sure uh, about the intentions of the president, because uh, the president would say 
something like, for example, uh, he would uh, talk about the military alliance. He says the military alliance will continue, but then he said that next year, in the following years, there will be no more joint exercises. I'll, I'll talk about that uh, uh, later. That is a pivot, in other words, to sacrifice one in favor of another. Now, uh, if he is going, they denied, uh, I, I've been talking with some of his advisors, they said that there's no way that there's going to be a military alliance with uh, China because uh, to me, that, that is also unthinkable. How can you have a military alliance so with a country that is uh, uh, violating your uh, exclusive economic zone that so threatens, yeah, yeah. That, that even threatens to physically occupy our features in the South China Sea? independent foreign policy of the president is not a problem. It's actually a solution. Uh, for the past 70 years, from 1946 to 2016, we've had the same. We've been told that the special relationship, the treaty alliance with the United States is good for the military, it's good for politics, and it's good for economics. But the current situation is proof that we need to calibrate, recalibrate our foreign relations. We are insecure, we are economically underdeveloped, and we have a rocket politics partly because of this uh, current policy that the president is questioning. So, tama ang term na ginagamit, independent foreign policy. Not interdependent. Are, yeah. so are you saying? So, you are you saying? Are you saying that this is okay? We are pivoting away from the United States, and it's okay. Is that what you're saying? No, the Philippines must be able to see its proper role in the world. We are in a very strategic position. Southeast Asia, the rest of Asia, we, we must move away from the lens of the United States. Uh, we have to determine our own national interests. Uh, we, for example, the Americans expect the American diplomats to be pro-American. Filipinos have this basic expectation of, uh, of our diplomats to be pro-Filipino. Uh, it, it has been 70 years of the same formula. But look at our military. Look at, look at the outcome of all the military war games, the bases, and everything. Everything from the MPP to Vietnam to EFCA. The problem in the South China Sea, the West Philippine Sea, is partly because of this relationship. Uh, our military is not the strongest in the region, despite or because of the, the military, uh, our military's dependence on the US. So, there's a segment of the population that welcomes the pronouncements of the president insofar as uh, it provides us an opportunity to review our relationship. We're not having a divorce with the United States. The United States will always be a friend of the Philippines. The question is, how are we going to reset our relationship to something more fair, uh, more mutually beneficial? Because for, for the past 70 years, look at so this so this is not a divorce, so what is it? It's like a temporary legal separation? What? It's a civil understanding. A cool off. A cool off. A what understanding? Civil. Civil. A civil. It is civil. Yeah. Okay. But I think what, what, whatever happens here, I agree with Tony also recently. Whether it's independent or interdependent, but this missing you formalize we lack the instructions. There are no uh, specific instructions from the formulator of the Philippine foreign policy to the president what directions we are going to take. No, but so, he said, for example, no more war games next year in the United States. But are this officially uh, stated? He, he said it, but there is no uh, official uh, what do you communication. Mean by officially stated? What do you mean by officially stated? There is no official states? communication to the effect that it will really be implemented. Meaning, the meaning he has to write it down in some sort of yes, order. Yes, we have to notify, we have to notify the partner whether is this now the new stand that we have. No one knows, so everything really is if. So we are all looking at it, uh, guessing game. So everything is really, if you look at it, where? Are we just supposed to follow him? Whatever he says, we just follow him. The president is supposed to be anything and everything that he says is supposed to be followed. Okay. Well, uh, yes, let's exactly. give a comment on the mutual defense. We cannot blame the mutual defense treaty. It's a 70 year old treaty in 1951. There are other countries with mutual defense treaties with the US, 
South Korea, Japan, Australia, and New Zealand, they did not suffer from this uh, MPT. In fact, South Korea prospered. Uh, it was not only a mutual defense treaty, 30,000 uh, American soldiers permanently stationed uh, inside uh, South Korea. The, the weakness of our armed forces uh, has nothing to do with the MPT. It has everything to do with the decision of our national leadership to uh, beef up our military. In the, the, the MPT does not provide uh, for the supply of uh, weapons. It only talks of, uh, of uh, mutual defense, of uh, retaliation in case one is attacked uh, by, by the nation by the other, according to the constitutional uh, processes. It's up to the leadership of the it's armed forces. Yes, for example, yeah, uh, we, 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 have fine. we have the, our armed forces, the AFP modernization program uh, uh, law uh, enacted in 1995, but we practically did not uh, buy anything. For example, look at, uh, look at Vietnam. Vietnam has a, an economy which is about two-thirds economy of the Philippines, in fact, even lower uh, 10 years ago, 20 years ago. But look at the kind of military that they have. Early in their history, they recognized that their major threat is uh, China. So uh, they picked up their military, they bought from Russia, they bought from the US, they bought from uh, India. Now they have a, a strong uh, military and in consonance also with a very strong and getting stronger economy. Okay. I know Tony Cruz wants to say something, but we need to take a short break.